Hello microgrinders and YouTubers, Alton from microgrinder.com here and today this video is all about telling you what you need to do to succeed in poker. So I'm writing a new poker book called Crush the Microstakes and this is going to be volume one that I'm writing and it's all about learning to beat the game, learning to play good poker. And I posted an excerpt from that book in my courses on Udemy, which is what you've seen on the screen here. And I want to take some time to go over these different, what I call basic truths in poker, um, to give you an idea of what you should strive towards to become a good poker player and to go from being good to potentially being great. So let's go down through this course announcement and let's talk about this. So. When I talk about these basic poker truths, I pulled an excerpt from Phil Gordon's Little Green book. So um, if you haven't read that and I'm looking for it, I thought it was on my desk. It's not here. Actually, it's right over here. Give me one second. So got to give a plug out to this book and let me go ahead and bring this in closer. This is a great read. He has a newer book. Um, it's a goldish color. I have that one as well, but this is a great read. and. Phil Gordon's a great author. If you haven't read this book, then definitely check out this book. Now, let me put that down. And in his book, in the beginning, he talks about traits of successful poker players. So let's quickly talk about them and let's understand why they're important. So the traits that he talks about, there's five of them. There's aggressiveness, patience, courageousness, being observant, and having a drive for greatness. So aggressive poker is winning poker. Um, we all hear this. We've seen it on TV. The poker players that play aggressive are the profitable poker players. And then the weak recreational players are going to be playing a very passive style. And that's just losing poker. Um, another important trait is that you have to be patient. So you have to be patient to pick your spots and not just to try to get into every hand and try to win every single hand. So winning poker players are very patient and they pick their spots. And on the flip side, bad poker players, they want to play every single hand. They make rash decisions and that causes them to lose money. Um, another trait is that you have to be courageous. So what do I mean by being courageous? Well, you have to be courageous to stick your money in the middle of the pot when you think you have the best hand, sometimes when you think a bluff is going to work, and other times when you think you might be beat, but there's a possibility that your opponent's bluffing. So you have to be a courageous type of person to be successful in No Limit Texas Hold'em because it's not a game for the faint of heart. You know, in any given hand, you can lose your entire stack. And if you're playing deep stack, that could be a lot of money. Now, the last two traits are very important. Number one, you have to be observant. And number two, you have to have a drive for greatness. So you have to be the type of person that's going to be observing what's going on at the table at all times, even if you're not even playing the hand. You have to have an idea of how your opponents are playing and how you should react to their playing styles. Now, you also need to have a drive for greatness. So when you have a pursuit for greatness, you're always going to seek to better yourself and to become a better poker player over time. Those that don't have a drive for greatness, they become more so mediocre at what they're doing. Another thing that you need to understand is that when you get in with the best hand, just be happy. Now, this is something that a lot of poker players tend to focus on is that I got in with the best hand and my opponent sucked out. My opponent hit a crazy runner runner. I took a bad beat and it just always seems to happen to me. Well, that's a fallacy in thinking because if our bad opponents never sucked out on us, if they never hit a bad beat, if they never hit a runner runner or one outer, and I trust me, I've been there too. It happens all the time. Well, if they never got lucky, then they wouldn't come back. So it's a part of the game. You just have to take it in strides and just understand that if you're getting in with the best hand, then you made a profitable move. A certain percentage of the time, your opponents are going to win. You know, they even with the craziest of draws, they have some sort of equity in the hand and they're going to hit their equity. So poker is a game of mathematics. It's a game of probabilities. And if you're getting in with the best of it, in the long run, you're going to make a lot of money. So learn to be okay with getting sucked out on. You know, just understand that, hey, you know what? They got to win too because if they don't win, 
they don't get lucky, they're not going to come back, and you're not going to have money to take in the long run. Another important takeaway from this excerpt that I posted is that you don't have to be the best player in the world. You don't even have to be the best player at the table. All you have to do is make fewer mistakes than the sum of the mistakes that your opponents are making at the table. So in all actuality, you could have two or three different opponents at the table that are better than you, but if one, two, or three opponents at the table are worse than you, then you're going to make money off of them. So you focus on taking the money away from the weaker opponents and minimizing giving money to the stronger opponents. Um, a lot of people tend to think that you have to play top notch, you have to have a world class type of thinking, and you have to be the best of the best to be poker. Well, the truth is you don't. While you should strive for greatness, which I think you should do, just understand that it is okay to make mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes every time I play. Poker is a game of imperfect information. We never know what our opponents have. So it's perfectly fine to make mistakes. Just understand, you don't have to be the best player at the table. You just have to be better than some of the other opponents at the table. And Daniel Negreanu talks about this. He, he had a great quote in his 2007 book, Hold'em Wisdom for All Players. And in this, and let me highlight this here so you can see it. You could be the best, you could be the fifth best poker player in the world, but if you're seated at a table with the top four players in the world, well, you're the sucker. And this gets to the point. You have to have some people at the table that you're better than they are. You don't have to be the best, but there have to be people at the table that are worse than you. And then the last thing that I want to talk about and this is pretty much a given. Most people already know this they have been playing poker for some time, is that aggressive poker is winning poker. Now, what do I mean by being aggressive? What I mean by being aggressive is that we don't need to be overly aggressive. We don't need to be pushing people around, bluffing left and right, raising, re-raising like crazy. What it means is that we should be raising and re-raising much more often than we are calling and limping. And then post-flop, we should be betting and raising much more than we're calling. But it's okay to call. It's okay to limp from time to time. There's always exceptions to the rule. But you need to understand, in the long run, the more aggressive you are, the more profitable you're going to be. Because if you think about it, on the spectrum, we have passive play, we have aggressive play. With passive play, the only way you can win by limping and calling is by making the best hand at showdown. If you're playing aggressive, we can win by either making the best hand or making our opponents fold. Um, either we're making them fold with a bluff or we're just making them fold to take down the dead money in the pot that they're not fighting for. And so just understand that aggressive poker is winning poker. And really, these are just some basic poker truths that I wanted to mention in this video today. Because for those of you that are watching my channel and you're beginning and struggling poker players, you need to understand some of these basic truths. You need to understand that aggressive poker is winning poker. You don't always have to be the best player at the table. When you get in with the best hand, be happy about it. And then understand the traits of successful poker players. Now, I didn't talk about this topic at Game of Decisions. Um, I'll save that for another video. There's all sorts of different topics I can talk about. These are just some of the excerpts from my book for Basic Poker Truths, but there's a lot more than this. And I just wanted to highlight some of what I thought were the important ones that I shared with the students in my classes. So thanks for watching this video. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't know that I had classes on Udemy.com, go ahead and check it out. This is my most popular course, Crush Microstakes Online Poker, The Complete Mastery Guide. Um, I think I have somewhere between 25 and 3,000 students enrolled in this course and 59 five-star reviews and pretty active course. Um, I'll give it a quick plug out real quick. Uh, actually, 2,400 students, so I guess I could saw that there. You'll notice tons of different questions, pretty active discussion board here on the right-hand side. And then for the lectures we have currently, um, I'll go through down the lectures we have. Let me scroll all the way to the bottom. There are a total of 113 lectures. So great course for those of you that are wanting to learn to be a good poker player. That's what this course is all about. So feel free to check it out. 
Thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions about this video, about these basic poker truths, or any comments, I'd really appreciate them. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button down on the bottom corner over here on the video, I believe. I'm hoping I'm pointing in the right direction. It's been out with microgrinder.com, and we'll see you at the next video.